King of Carol Flowers. One of three. Okay, I got an achievement. Nice. While I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles, I hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. The nice mail person slides a couple of letters and a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple of tries for them to get it in. Hey, my coupons. I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm. I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda. She yells through the door. What? I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay, just thought you want this big old envelope we got from HIA. Immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. Horn Institute for the Arts? I mean, if you're busy, I can come back. <clears throat> Father, please. I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. That's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out a piece of envelope. She pulls out a letter and unfolds it. Oh. And the suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. Amanda's face is unreadable. Hmm. I can't believe this. Uh oh. Oh, honey. It's okay if you didn't. Yeah. I got in! Oh, sweet. Oh. I got in. Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god, I really can't believe I got in. Well, of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview and your photograph... Your pho <sighs> and your photography is incredible. Wait, Dad... I know this one's really expensive, and it's so far away. I think for a moment. HIA was one of the more expensive schools that Amanda applied to, but I know she had her heart set on it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we're going to make it work. Aww. Really? Of course. Amanda hugs me again. Hey. Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice. Wherever you want. Yeah. <clears throat> Wherever? Uh-oh. Amanda and I walk along the bayside, tearing into our foil wrap burritos from a nearby food truck. You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. Please, Dad, you know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a Rito with a view. I can't say I'm mad. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through the bay. Yeah. <clears throat> and the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes and there are all these galleries nearby and there's a discount if you bring your student ID and Amanda, slow down. You're going to choke on your burrito. I know. I'm just excited. Did I mention that students get their own studio space once they're seniors? And we get all the professional photo editing software for free. That's something that I need to get because I do want to get back into photography and I do want to learn photo editing and all that so I can produce better photos than I have in the past. I just previously hadn't had the money for it. But that that's my goal. And to get a better camera. It's nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic about HIA. But I wish she wouldn't do, do it between bites or a burrito. I thought I taught her to chew with her mouth closed. I wonder who my roommate's going to be. You take a survey online and they match you with someone with a similar major and interest. I bet we're going to be best friends. Craig and I were. A good roommate can be a lo lifelong friend. But don't even get me started on bad roommates. Oh my god. I've had my fair share of those as well. Oh, no. I'm just kidding. We didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig brought home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about our new foreign exchange student. I had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. Oh, God. Carl rolled. 
Ooh, they let you have animals in the dorm if you get a note saying that you need one? I bet I could forge one. I think I can get a rabbit. Or maybe a snake. Or maybe both. Would the snake eat a rabbit, though? Yes. Oh, boy. I think I'll leave all that up to you. She's so excited. I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. So, you know I had that talk with Mr. Vega. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? What? What? No. I don't want to put a damper on the good news, but I need you to knock it off. Knock it out of the park these last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horns, we need that scholarship money. I know you can do it. Okay. <clears throat> I promise I'll try harder. A pat her on the back. That was easy. Think you can handle a 14-hour drive to come home for the holidays? There's going to be some treacherous ice roads across. And don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. Oh God. Well, I'll be worth it if I. It'll be worth it if I get to see you. <clears throat> My eyes immediately well up with tears. Aww. Oh, Dad, don't cry. Sorry, I'm just very, very proud of you. You're all grown up now, and you're such a good person, and I hope you know how important you are to me. Dad, stop. You're going to make me cry, too. It's too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad, I can't get tears in my burrito. It's going to make it taste sad. I pulled Amanda in for a hug and kissed her on the forehead. Nah. Love you, kiddo. Huh. Love you, too, pops. So cute. Oh, I love this game. Okay. Oh! What is this? <clears throat> Hugo and Damien. Oh my god. Hey, are you up to... Oh. <clears throat> hey, are you up to anything tonight? Um... Hugo and I were planning to go to the Art Walk downtown. And we're wondering if you would care to accompany us. Okay. I would normally write a letter longhand, but I've run out of distressed parchment paper. Oh my god. I'd rather just go with Hugo. Whoa. Why can't I see Damien? Oh, whoa. Why can't I see Damien and Hugo's chat? Am I a hacker? No, because they sent you a message. But I don't even have a hacker alias. The feds are going to bust down my door any minute now. What? I gotta destroy this computer. Uh, this is a group chat? <laughs> He's like, a hole? Oh, thank God. Do either of you guys know how to destroy a computer? <laughs> oh my God. <clears throat> you can run Derek's boot and nuke from a startup flash drive, but once you're done, that it's best to physically destroy the platters altogether. <laughs> Hugo's like, what? <laughs> um, the Victorians were well versed in information security. Do you want to go see some art or not? Art is good. Let's go see that art. <laughs> see that art. <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> Oh, this is so funny. <clears throat> Damien and Hugo invite me to the monthly art walk in downtown Maple Bay. I've never really been to one of these before, so I'm not quite sure what I'm in for. I think I'm here a bit early. <clears throat> so I guess I get to kind of like, quote unquote, date all the dads and then pick one? I don't know. <clears throat> I don't see Damien or Hugo around anywhere, and I feel just a little uncomfortable standing among all these fancy art people. Tiny. I turn around. It's Joseph. That's not who I was looking for. Joseph, what are you doing here? Joseph scoffs at me. What am I doing here? How could you ask me that? 
I'm obviously a huge art uh, appreciate, appreciator, appreciatist. Um, you're the one saying it. You should know what it is. Okay, fine. Damien invited me to this art walk thing. I'm guessing he invited you too. Hold on one second. Oh. Okay. Yep. I'm mainly a little out of my depth here. Thank God. I thought I was going to be the odd one out. Are you allowed to say that? Say what? You know. <clears throat> thank God. Oh. Yep. I actually get double points when I say it since I'm a minister. Oh. Oh my God. That's right. You're a priest. The points get you into heaven. That's how it works. No. Anyway, where are the guys? I look and spot Hugo and Damien, who seem to have just arrived at the gallery. Good eve, good eve, good eve. Okay. Oh. Evening, friends. Oh. Who's ready for some art? Um, oh, God. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm in for. Okay. Um, same. All you have to know is that if you're ever feeling overwhelmed, there's generally always a table that has free wine and cheese. Sounds good to me. I like art now. <laughs> I've got the table on my sights. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go help myself to some tiny wines. Uh, I'll talk with Hugo and Damien because I don't want to hang around with Joseph. So what's this first place? This particular artist specializes in landscape painting of various locales within the American Northeast. Hmm. I look at the art. It is rad art. <laughs> at the risk of sounding uninformed, do all these landscapes look like butts to you guys? What the heck? Hmm. Damien and Hugo lean in, examining the paintings in earnest. Oh my god. It would appear as if you're correct. Oh. Valid assessment. Hey, this art stuff's pretty easy. Hmm. Oh, it gets more complicated. Hmm? Sometimes the butts are more symbolic. Sometimes the butts are metaphors. Sometimes art is about the butts they don't draw. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. <coughs> Joseph returns to our group with tiny cheese and wine. What I miss? Butts. Shame. The cheese is nice, though. Shall we visit the next place? We leave the first gallery and walk a few minutes before we reach another one. This gallery is a bit more crowded. Huge paintings of... I'm not even sure. Hang on the walls. Oh, oh, geez. What am I looking at here? <laughs> this is abstract art. I think the more important question is, what does this art mean to you? I stare at the painting, concentrating as hard as I can on its meaning. Um, it's a butt. <laughs> uh, if I say it reminds me of my childhood, would that be creepy? The gestures, the color, they remind me of my childhood and my parents. Intriguing that you discover something so personal and an image so nonspecific. May I ask you to say a little more? Um. <clears throat> I want to say just kidding, it's a butt. No, I'm going to say it. They're going to hate me. Everyone else stares at the painting. Yeah, that's definitely a butt. <laughs> I... Oh. Hmm. While the ballad assessment, I feel like the artist was trying to make a different statement. Probably how much he liked butts. Okay, Joseph isn't too, too bad. 
you are a servant of the Lord. <laughs> We're all God's creatures, even butts. Okay, you're you're redeeming yourself in my eyes. Just <laughs> comparing this piece to the artist's body of work, I'm pretty sure this represents a sense of isolation he feels in creating traditional abstract artwork in a field that's rapidly moving toward digitization. Wow, how would you figure that? That's what it says on the placards. Oh God, oh. Let's look at a few more of these. We walk around the gallery, sampling some more of the artist's work. I almost hate to say it, but abstract art is kind of growing on me. It's interesting that the artist chose not to let their work be defined by, what's the word? Realism? Realism. As we're looking at one of the paintings, a patron scoffs loudly. Psh, I could do that. <clears throat> Excuse me? Oh my. Hugo, not here. No, come back here. The patron walks away, not noticing Hugo fuming right next to him. Mm -hmm. You say you could do that, but you didn't. You don't seem to have the intellectual depth of the artist or the artistic skill to execute, to execute a piece, even a fraction, as impressive as this one. Mm -hmm. Art is the truest expression of the self, and it seems like your self is bad, so your art would be bad. Oh my god. <clears throat> Hugo's insult game isn't the best, but there's no denying his passion. Damien is holding him back at this point. Why don't they date? Hmm. Friend, friend, he's not worth it. <sighs> Hugo manages to cool down. He smoothed his jacket. <sighs> I'm sorry, I just love art very much. We know, buddy. I pat Hugo on the shoulder. Hmm. You know what would ease the mood? Is it cheese? No. Mm -hmm. It's wine and cheese. <laughs> Cosign. The four of us head over to the wine and cheese table, which thankfully is grounded in realism and is actual wine and cheese. Oh. We got one last stop on the tour. You lot feeling up to it? Is it going to be any weirder than this art? Ooh, excuse me. Holy crap. I didn't realize I was going to burp until it was already there. <laughs> it is absolutely weirder than this art. Let's do it. Oh, God. Yeah. Damon, Hugo, and Joseph and I walk over to a performance in the street. Several masked performers and leotards undulate wildly on the ground, screaming both at each other and us. Lord, so, quick question. Oh. Shoot. What is happening? Mm. I second this question. Mm. Performance art. What does it mean? Uh. Again, I pose the very same question to you. Uh, but? Uh, the... I want to say butts. I'm not going to, but um, I'm going to say the very humanity of being human. What do you think they're trying to say? I believe it's less about what they're saying and more about what they're why they're saying it. I think there's something special about performance art. With almost every other form of art, music, painting, photography, the artist uses their medium as a conduit for their emotions. With performance art, the medium is the artist, is the purest expression of raw human emotion. It's art is catharsis. Hmm. That's beautiful, Damien. So what you're saying is, if I start making really loud fart noises right now, it's art as long as I like really mean it. <laughs> Uh, wait, was it Joseph? Didn't I look it up and Joseph was Aaron? I think so. It, it makes sense. Damien fixes him with a hard stare. Okay, you can tell Damien loves the uh, performance art. <laughs> I was going to start making fart noises, but based on the look on your face, that joke isn't going to play well with this crap. Ah. <laughs> oh. Wise. Hey. 
We watch the rest of their performance in earnest, or as earnestly as we can, and clap politely for the dancers' scream as the dancers scream their way off stage. Phew, I think I'm all arted out. Agreed. We all decide to walk home together. We make our way back to the cul-de-sac. Tiny wine and tiny cheese sloshing around in my stomach. I think what I've learned tonight, and not just what I've learned about art, which was nice and extremely informative, but what I learned tonight is that when you put a bunch of tiny wine and tiny cheese together, it eventually becomes regular wine and regular cheese, followed by too much wine and too much cheese. <laughs> the tiny cheese lulled me into a false sense of security. I felt safe with the tiny cheese. Wax wings too close to the surface. Oh. To the sun. Cheese wings. Those would melt in the sun too. I feel like it's more appropriate imagery. Oh. Plus, it'd be delicious. A nice... What? A nice... M... Mentholator, possibly? I've never seen that word before. <laughs> Hey, if you guys were painters, what would you paint? <laughs> I actually dabble in oils. I mostly paint landscapes. I'm not very good, but it's a nice way to pass the time. Mm -hmm. I think I would focus on personal portraits of people in unique professions. Like, for example, luchadors. <laughs> oh, I think I'd paint boats, seascapes, maybe some lighthouses, mostly boats. Really? Oh. Yeah, I'm surprised you're choosing boats in favor of a long history of religious imagery and artwork. Mm. What? Boats are cool. Hmm. What about you? Um, I would do food artistry. Oh. I would probably do still life of various foods. Bowls of fruit, maybe some bread in there. Would there be cheese involved? <laughs> <laughs> See, I thought about it, and no, I can't stare at a pile of cheese for eight hours without eating some of it, and that would ruin the whole thing. Huh. Excellent point. We finally get to the cul-de-sac. All right, boys, good art. Good art. Agreed. Oh. See you guys around. Whether you want to or not, we're all neighbors, after all. I had inside to deal with my inevitable cheese over. <laughs> Welcome. You've got dads. Okay. Um <clears throat> oh, Conversation ended. Oh man. All right. Conversation ended. All right. Uh let's see. <clears throat> Do I want to go on another thing with Matt or try someone else? Uh, I want to stick with Matt. Well, I got a heart with him. Wait, I'm, I'm curious about something. Back. Uh. Oh, I don't have anything with him. Nope. Okay. <clears throat> Let's message him again. Is it going to let me message Matic? Instead of messaging the guy, why don't I just walk over and grab some coffee? I'm feeling really sluggish today anyway. Good idea. Amanda, Amanda sticks her head out of her room. Father, want to go to the coffee spoon? Oh, so you can get called cool once and now you're the cool dad who hangs out at coffee shops and listen to neo jazz and stuff? Amanda, are you going to bring your laptop and your leather bound journal so you can work on your poetry and that anthology? Look, honey, do you want me to buy you a coffee or not? Let me grab my laptop and my leather-bound journal. 
Oh, this dude's here. Amanda and I make the short walk over to the coffee spoon. The place is quiet today. Just a few people hanging out and reading books in the cozy little nooks. I walk up to the counter and see a familiar peer space. Hey, you were the dude I yelled at a bunch the other night. Amanda casts a sideways glance at me. He tried to sell me the shirts. And who might you be, miss? This is my daughter, Amanda, the person I'm a father to and am very protective of. An honor to make your acquaintance. My name is Pablo. Did I mention that I make witch house music? Hmm. I wouldn't call witch house music, but okay. Uh. A piercing blow to my ego, though not one that would dissuade my need to impress you. My innate dad senses tingle. I am overwhelmed with a fatherly protective energy. I must do something to protect my child. Oh, God. Uh... What if I just change the subject? Anyways, Paula, I didn't know you worked here. Oh, yeah, man. Today's my first day. Matt's still training me. Tiny. <clears throat> Matt comes out from washing dishes in the back room to meet Amanda and I. He and I high-five as fellow cool people do. Oh, my God. I see you met my newest employee. At your service, although I'm only here until Vacant Vale starts a world tour. When's that? Well, we have to put out a record first. All right, Pablo. Now... What do we do with customers again? Right, yes. Pablo clears his throat. Hello, good folk of Maple Bay. Can I interest you in a tasty caffeinated beverage? <laughs> a smashing pumpkin spice latte, please. A classic. And you? Uh... Let's do... Americano foot no Father John Misto A Father John Misto please That might be the worst pun I've ever heard. Hey, it's pure comedy. Yeah, puns are the highest form of comedy. Yeah Oh, I was making a joke of Father John Misty had had an album called Pure Comedy and the drink is named after Father John Misty, so I was like, yeah, never mind. <clears throat> Coming right up. Pablo gets to work making our drinks while Matt observes him. He'll get the hang of it. For as goofy of a dude as he is, kid works hard. Hey man, that concert was a lot of fun. We should hang out again. Hell yes. I'm actually going to be done training Pablo in a couple hours. I was going to go record shopping. Want to come along? I'm sorry. I'm getting the hiccups. Absolutely. Pablo brings us our drinks and Amanda buries herself in her laptop. I spend my time sipping my drink and cracking jokes with Matt. Last time we hung out, he told me that he had trouble hanging out with other people. But for some reason, he and I can talk and joke like old buds. It's weird. I feel really comfortable around him. Once Matt feels comfortable leaving Pablo on his own, I say goodbye to Amanda and we start walking to the record store. Yeah, have you ever been here before? No, I mean, we have a record player sent in the living room, but all I have are two copies of Frampton Comes Alive. Hey. Oh, this should be fun then. We're going to find you some good stuff. <clears throat> the walls of the store are packed with posters, artwork, stickers, and records. A few people mill around, flipping through milk crates of albums. Some indie band is playing through the speakers. It's a nice vibe. So, why do people still buy records? Isn't it kind of outdated at this point? There's a lot of people who will try to tell you that vinyl sounds warmer, or more true to the artist's intent. But, I, but really, I think it's just nice to collect records. It's cool then, this day and age... We have just about every song ever created available instantaneously on our phones. But there's something about holding an album and getting to see the artwork in your hands that I'll always love. That's why I try to get as many of the records I love in physical form as possible. Remember when we were kids and we had to wait around by the radio with the cassette tape 
so that we could record our favorite songs. Yes. Oh my god, I remember that. It made each listen really special, and mixtapes were even cooler because of how much work they took. Now you just make a playlist. I think the last time someone gave me a real mixtape was in high school. I never had a mixtape, but someone, um, a friend back when I was in high school, I think it was, they had uh, CD copies of Fam of the Opera that they put on a cassette tape. Uh, I think it was like two cassette tapes for me. And I wore those things out listening to it. I look around the multi-level record store and spot some genres. <clears throat> Future Wave, Jungle, And what? And Archo Punk? Nun Exploitation? I have no idea where I even start. Man, this is a little overwhelming. Here, let me help you find something you might like. If you were a milkshake, what flavor would you be? What? <laughs> Purple. <laughs> um. Let's go strawberry. If you could only buy one type of candle scent for the rest of your life, what would it be? <clears throat> Let's see. Um. Power Violence Cherry Blossom, what the heck? Or Spring Creek Fireball. Uh, let's go Cherry Blossom. What's your favorite ambient sound? <laughs> Star Trek Bridge Ambience. Oh my god. Um, let's go with rain. What's your dream vacation spot? Inside an active volcano? What the heck? Oh my god. Um, my backyard. What's your deepest, darkest fear? Oh, wow. Uh, um, these answers get deep. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with, I worry that people are nice to me only because they want something. Matt thinks for a moment. Hmm. Oh, I know just the thing. Matt runs to the other end of the store and returns holding a record behind his back. He shows it to me. This is Evil Friends by Portugal, the man. Danger Mouse came on this album to produce it, and I think it was the perfect blend of what <clears throat> PTM does and what Danger Mouse does. Super fun, super catchy. You'll love it. Whoa, dude. Thanks for the recommendation. You're going to have a great time with it. Promise? Matt and I bring our records to the cash register. A young girl with a septum ring and a buzz cut stands behind the counter with one ear button. Usual stuff today, Matt? Just some light pickups. Matt places three albums on the counter. Swear I'm Good at This by Diet Sig. Forever by Mystery Skulls and Greatest Hits by Remo Drive. Tight. The cashier rings Matt up and hands back his albums on the back. She stares at me suspiciously. Who's the nerd? That nerd is my buddy. Tiny, this is the beacon of human charm. Oh, this beacon of human charm is Molly. I got kicked out of art school for destroying my paintings at the end of every critique. Lovely to meet you. Anyways, Matt, is the open mic night still on? You know it. Are the third waves going to do a special acoustic performance? I might see if I can get a few of the girls together. There's an open mic night going on? Yeah, dude. 
We do it every month at the Coffee Spoon. Some amazing talent always comes through. Got a flyer for it right here. You and Amanda should come by that night. Matt blushes. I mean, if you're not doing anything. <laughs> Will vacant veil be playing? <laughs> if only. I finished paying for my record and we head out of the store. Man, what a trip down memory lane. I haven't been in a record shop like that since Van. Van's had shag carpeting. Now that you mention it, isn't it strange to think of all those weird little musical memories? How do you mean? Well, I think music is a very time and place sort of thing. A song is important to me, not only in that I think it sounds good, but where I was and what I was doing when I listened to it. There's music that reminds me of exes, of struggling through school, of being so poor I didn't know where my next meal was coming from. All that stuff. And listening to those songs reminds me of those moments of my life. Yeah, now that I think of it, even the pop concert Amanda made me take her to is special to me. I mean, I'm not really a fan of the band, but hearing their songs on the radio reminds me of how young and excited Amanda was. And then that even reminds me of a younger me, going to see my favorite bands in concert with all my friends. We would always go to my friend Cynthia Chapman's house beforehand and smoke yeah, in her basement like we were so slick. Her parents definitely knew what we were doing. Oh, God. Wait, when was the last time you smoked? Matt stops and thinks for a moment. Are, wait, are, are we going to do that? I hope not. It's been decades. Dude, me too. Where do you even get it now? Is that even what the kids call it these days? I don't know. But I bet I could find out. Do you want it? <laughs> what? <sighs> Do you want to and listen to our new records? I want to say no. Um, why not? Matt pulls out his phone and starts texting. Are we really going to do this? After a few minutes, he looks up and smiles at me. Ah, Molly's got a hookup. Of course Molly does. Says to meet in an alley near the coffee shop. Hey.